I know that that unity that we felt on 9-11 has frayed a little bit uh, over the years, uh, and I have no illusions about the difficulties of the debates that we'll have to be engaged in uh, in the weeks and months to come. But I also know there have been several moments like this uh, during the course of this year that have brought us together as an American family, whether it was the tragedy in Tucson uh, or, most recently, uh, our unified response to the terrible storms that have taken place in the South. Last night was one of those moments. Wow. Welcome back to Harbor. That was, of course, President Obama talking um, to a bipartisan dinner meeting of congressional leaders at the White House last night. Early poll numbers show some big changes in attitudes. Of course, a Washington Post Pew Research Center poll conducted Monday finds a spike in the country's attitude, attitude about how things are going. Roughly one out of three now say they're satisfied. It was one out of four in March, so that's an uptick. The president's personal approval, however, has gone way up in this poll. He's up at up at plus 18 points now and was at minus three last month. Other polls out today show a smaller bump. See them there at 56 percent approval. But while the country is positive on the hand of terrorism, his handling in Afghanistan, still just 40 percent approve his handling of the economy. Duh. Has something to do with reality. Will killing Osama bin Laden prove to be a defining moment for this president? And would Republican attitudes be different if this had happened while George W. Bush was still... Well, you don't have to ask that one. Howard Feynman is the editorial director for the Huffington Post and MSNBC flag analyst, of course, and Todd Purdom is national editor for Vanity Fair. Gentlemen, do I have to ask what Republicans would do? Secular canonization. The guy would be on Mount Rushmore if W had done this. <laughs> They'd be carving the stone tonight, right? Yeah. Oh, there's no question. Uh, dancing. The, the spiking I mean, of the ball I mean, would be just, unbelievable. Just, just think what George W. did, uh, you know, on the aircraft. Without even doing it. Without even doing it. Just put the sign up. It really wasn't mission accomplished. This really was a mission accomplished. So if it were, if it were they, if it were the Republicans, oh, my God, yes, there'd be fireworks everywhere. Todd? Well, most you want to venture a partisan assessment here? I think most responsible Republicans really were quite effusive in their praise of President Obama. I was struck by Dick Cheney on MSNBC on yeah, Monday morning. He, was good. He, he couldn't have been more gracious. So there are people but who... But you know the numbers down here. Eighty percent of this, of the Republican Party, give credit to the President W, and only 60 percent of Republicans give it to President Obama. They're and that all, is really sc screwy. As President Kennedy said, there'll always be some guy who didn't get the word. <laughs> That's well said. Here's more from the Washington Post Pew poll. Overall, 76 percent of the country gives President Obama credit for killing Obama, and 51 percent gives President Bush credit. 31 percent give President Bush no credit. As far as who gets the biggest amount of credit, a great deal, as the poll puts it, Democrats overwhelmingly break for Obama. Independents are about two to one for Obama. Republicans are almost two to one for Bush. Six in ten Republicans say President Obama deserves some credit for Obama's for bin Laden's death. But eight in ten Republicans say President Bush deserves some of the credit. I think Ray, they probably believe Reagan deserves most of the credit for of everything, Howard. Of course. This is bizarro, isn't it? Well, it is bizarro, but I, I, I think that even though the numbers are certainly at best equivocal for the president among Republicans, they're stronger among independents. And I think overall, this is a calling card for him in terms of the long burden that the Democrats have had and the Democratic presidents have had on the notion that they're either weak or inept. On How they military earn that affairs. Rent, that rap. Well, one Doesn't thing, one. That, one thing one. that happened back in the, in the Jimmy Carter days, Jimmy Carter tried a similarly dramatic rescue, in this case of the American hostages. With helicopters. With helicopters, and, you know, it was a disaster a in the horror. desert. It was a horror. It was a horror, and in, in many ways sealed Jimmy Carter's fate and reinforced the idea that the Democrats going back to Vietnam, going back to the George McGovern campaign where he was against the war and so on, that the Democrats were somehow both wary of, inept about, inept about and and, and opposed to the use, the expert use of tough military action. This is a case where President Obama and his team were brave in the choices they made, they were surgical in what they did, and they succeeded in, to the utmost. And I think that's going to go a long way, especially when the Republicans who are likely to run and that the dominant and prominent Republican contenders have no military experience. Now we're past that time. Nobody has any military okay. experience anymore. But now, ironically, it's Barack Obama who's got the commander-in-chief experience. John McCain isn't running again. And I think it's a big tipping point, in my view, a big tipping point between the parties that didn't exist before. Todd, there's well, a difference between restraint. Ike was restrained. He didn't use military force hardly at all. 
He didn't Carter didn't it. use it, but there's a difference in between restraint and pacifism, I guess. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's really fascinating to think that the 2012 election could turn on the Democrats as the National Security Party and the Republicans trying to get some traction on the economy, when for most of our lifetimes it's been the reverse. Yeah. Um, exactly. But I, I think, you know, one of the things that President Obama may well have put to rest with this, there, there'll be some people who never like him, but you really can't say he's not um, a, a man who has a certain amount of daring do because he did pick the hardest option. And, uh, you know, it also think, resonates with what he did with the pirate that time in a smaller case, right? Yes, I think it resonates with the notion that we are not going to mess around. And the White House was quite successful, I thought, in putting out those speeches from 2007 and 2008, in which at the time, you'll recall, people sort of mocked him. Oh, yeah, if you saw bin Laden, you'd go take him out. And you shouldn't say anything like that out loud because it'll hurt our relationship with Pakistan. It's not it's done. Uh, uh, by, by the way, he's put a lot more. He did put a lot more troops in Afghanistan. Okay, he did. A, he didn't put as many as some of the stepped conservatives. Up the predator attacks. Stepped up the predator <clears throat> attacks with the drones. And here are the differences between the President Bush and Dick Cheney, almost literally pushing the 500-pound daisy cutter bombs down onto Iraq and not getting what they were targeting, mm -hmm. and the President getting the person that he was targeting. There's a difference between being cold-blooded. I think presidents have to be cold-blooded and being a sadist. Yeah, but I, you know, all the debate now about I think I most people would agree. Yeah, well, all, all the debate, all the debate, all the debate now about whether about whether uh, 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 Osama bin Laden was was defending himself, whether he had a weapon or didn't have a weapon. Let, let's face it. I mean, based on what we're thinking, uh, okay. Obama, the, the, the president's orders was were, were to shoot and kill. Uh, Todd, you said some people never get the message. Liz Cheney and Bill Crystal put out a statement in their capacity of leaders of a group called, I love these names, Keep America Safe. Well, I guess we can agree with that. Here's part of their statement. We're grateful for the bravery of the Americans who raided the compound near Islamabad and killed Osama bin Laden. We're also grateful to the men and women of America's intelligence services who, through their interrogation of high-value detainees, developed the information that apparently led us to bin Laden. No mention of President Obama there, Liz Cheney's dad, the former vice president, did give President Obama credit, but he was also quick to tell the interrogation techniques he long championed. Isn't this strange? Let's watch. All I know is what I've seen in the newspaper at this point, but it wouldn't be surprising if, in fact, um, that program uh, produced uh, results that, that ultimately contributed to, uh, to the success of this venture. The Ministry of Truth. In Orwellian terms, once again, the guy, what are we about here? We're, the best evidence we got from Mark Mazzetti of the Times, we're going to keep reporting this, obviously, there may be just arguments about what the nature of the thing was, but torture, waterboarding did not get us the names of the courier did not get us to the compound. We're finding it out. What do you hear? Yes, I think that's the absolute clearest understanding to date. And to the degree that it did anything, it produced some high-ranking people who said they'd never heard of the name of the courier, right. which is what made our experts think he must be very important. And that they were lying, as Senator McCain said, you do when you're tortured. Just, just stop the torture. From, from what I know of this, it's much less a matter of some dramatic moment where somebody breaks under uh, the cascade of water than it is a lot of intelligence... He's in a bottom bite. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah he's, uh, he's in a bottom <laughs> It's a lot of intelligence people painstakingly putting together thousands and thousands of little clues. These days, a lot of intelligence is about mass data mining. It's about millions of bits of pieces of information. Yeah. It's about crowdsourcing. It's about all kinds Good of stuff work. that Dick Cheney did doesn't you like, really know that much about. Did you like the idea that it still came down to a call? that it was 60 to 80 percent. It wasn't a 100 percent. You know, even DNA isn't a 100 percent, right? Well, your old friend Senator Moynihan in the health care debate in 1994 said nothing is ever 100 percent. Nothing is ever 100 percent. But this was 60 to 80. Well, but the, pre the reason that he picked, the president had the two choices to either bomb that place into oblivion and have there be questions about oh, who yeah. was really and in there. And a lot of dead people. So he went for the higher value thing, and he got rewarded beyond his expectation because they found such a trove of documents there, uh, hard drives and disk drives and flash drives and, you know, the, the things that we're going to get potentially out of that, besides the satisfaction of taking out justice on Osama bin Laden, are almost beyond calculation at this Who point. Who said that genius was the ability to take pains? Was that D.H. Lawrence? Somebody like that? I think that's what it's about a lot of times. Writing, for example, writing, both of you guys yeah. do great writing. You, people say, how come you're a great writer? I'm careful. Well, my understanding, work my, my understanding of the way the president operates as an administrator is that he sometimes drives people crazy. He, he pops his head in the meetings all the time. In this case, and he's a detailed guy. In this case, he was in all those meetings. You can say that sometimes he, he you know, he, he, he's too much lost in the details or he, he sees too many complexities, this and that, this and that. In this case, we've, we've tracked 
trashed him a lot for being overly complex in his thinking sometimes. Mm -hmm. This is a case where his ability to deal with complex things really helped him evaluate, okay. it seems, all the Do you think we'll ever get uh, picked a president, or we ever have picked a president, we think is not as smart as we are? Do you, think, do you think the right will even go that far? I mean, they're looking at people like Palin and Bach when they don't think they're as smart as they are. Do you think they'll actually pick some of the an average person says, I'd like him to be my president. I don't think you're as smart as I am, but I'd like him to be president. Because that seems to be the repeal. I don't know anything. I don't read anything. Make me your president. That seems to be what they're saying. Right? Well, my parents spent a lot of money on school tuition in college that I, you know, I hope we won't because it would really be kind <laughs> it of... It just seems like that's what we're looking at. I think the shopping is going to be different from now on. They're going to look for somebody as smart as Obama. I think. You think? Ask you too Not much. Sure. Thank you, Howard Feynman. Is there an answer to this? <laughs> anyway, sure. thank you, Howard. Todd Furtum. I think of them when I'm here.